today, in November of 2021. The I am, the present tense mind of God with what's going on currently. They don't want to bring that truth. They don't want to bring that type of that type of that type of conviction, of judgment, and calling those things out. But Lord God, this is what you do to this man's life. This is what you've put in my ministry. This is what you've anointed me and raised me up from the from the from my birth to be, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So Lord, I pray now, speak to speak through me, Lord, and help your people to understand your word. We ask you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, I'm gonna grab this bottle of water because I don't want to be. Oh. All right, so I almost forgot I wanted to share this. Last night when I come down here, um, I was in prayer, you know, talking to the Lord, and uh, it was late last night, you know, how the Lord just, when He when he begins to move, the Holy Ghost begins like a, like a dove. It just begins to move on me, but the way it moves on me, it's very deep. It's very, very intense at times. It was so intense last night that I was laying on my face. I didn't even want, I, I didn't even want to look up. I said, Lord, I'm just, I felt like Moses before the burning bush last night. I could feel his presence come on me very heavy last night. And I'm laying before the Lord. And as I, as I study this message and I begin to see where we're at, what we're coming into, and, and understanding what God's thinking and with the Word of God and the current, current events and what's taking place right now. And when you look at what Brother Bam taught 50, 60 years ago, and you see the very things he talked about taking place right now we're living in. And you begin to get stirred. And you begin to feel the pressure that, Lord, there are people that, that, that by the grace of God, have looked to my ministry, have looked to my life, to Lord, to, 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 that they trust that I'll bring the Word. I got one motive here, to bring the Word of God, to bring the mind of God. But there's a heavy weight that you, that you carry sometime, you know. And I was laying before the Lord, and I was, and I was just, oh, God, help me, Lord. I kinda, you, know, you almost feel like Moses Carrying that burden for the Lord, carrying that burden with Him, and I'm asking the Lord, how do I, Lord, how do I, how do I lead these people, Lord? How, how do I do? What do I do, Lord? And all of a sudden, the Lord speaks to me. I've quoted quotes here. I even dated it, November twenty first, twenty twenty one. There is more for me to do. And as I am humbled, I wrote down here before the presence of the Lord, on my face in prayer. The pillar of fire is near me. I could feel it. There's, there's just something. There, there's different level. There's feeling that, that when, I talked about having the little Lord Jesus stand next to me. I can't explain it to you, folks. But last night, it's like you just feel that 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 angel, of the Lord, that pillar of fire is just right there, right there next to you. The I am that I am, the ever present God, because we're in the present tense. There's things going on in the present tense. That there's spiritual food in due season. There's meat for there's a, there's a word for right now that God wants to speak to His people. Amen. Now He spoke to me this: I will appear to you greater at the appointed time. There's gonna there's something. I know there's something greater ahead. But when I felt his presence last night, it was so powerful for that brief, I don't know, two minutes. And then it leaves you. Then it's just, you're back to your just Paul. You're just a little, <laughs> little nobody. You're like, man, Lord, you, you spoke to me. I felt your presence, Lord. I need your presence, Lord. I'm just a man. And... And I know in my heart that that there's a greater man because God's been dealing with me lately, folks. That God spoke to me on the day about some things, spoke to my heart. And when I say it, He speaks to me, it's 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 folks. I've 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 told this at Bible study Monday, and I tell you this right now. I used to I've told my kids this many 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 times. One of the greatest things that you can have is learning how to hear God's voice. The still, small, voice. The more time you spend in the Word, the more time you spend spend with Him, you begin to get rid of all the idols out of your home. As I took all the pictures down, you begin to let well, anything He shows you up, get it out. Amen. You deal with this. You you create this atmosphere where the Holy Ghost can just move in and out of your life through the Word. Amen. It's all back to the Word. Because I'm going to show you something in what He told me. So because it's so simple. At the end of the day, it's God and simplicity. 
is you begin to learn to hear God's voice and you begin to know when he speaks to you. And that's something I've learned over, over what, when you walk so close to the Lord, you begin to understand and recognize his voice. But then you could, it's so, but the devil works right there next to it too. And I've learned how Satan can, can almost speak close to it. And only, it, folks, you have to walk with God enough to understand and know the difference. And it's, that's something that just is, is God has been giving me. The, obviously, I've been blessed to be able to catch it. And I believe it's the same for every child of God. Get alone with God. Get still. Look into your life. Check your home. If you got idolatry in your house, if you got pictures of sports figures and, and sports pennants up, and you're so caught up in your sports teams and, 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 and your money and, and all these different things, and you're idolizing, and you're still holding on to, you know, you're idolizing a woman, you know, or, or vice versa, a man, or whatever these things are, get the idols out of your life and ask God to show you. Put him first, and you'll be able to learn to begin to hear his voice and know when he speaks to you. I'm telling you, because you got. But at the same time, too, you want to know when he speaks to you. Every time he speaks to me, he runs me right back to the Word. It runs right back to the Scriptures. So you get these people out there. Oh, God spoke to me. God spoke to me. Oh, Lord spoke to me. The Lord spoke to me, and it doesn't line up with the Word. And ain't God speaking to you there, person? I see so much of that going on too. So that's my advice to you. You want to hear hearing God's voice is so crucial for your person for your personal walk with God, your personal life. Okay. Now I was wrote down here. I'm like, Lord, I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm looking at myself like Isaiah the prophet. Lord, me, you know me, Lord. And He speaks to me as I was with Moses, so am I with thee. And He emphasizes this right here: the word. It just hit like a hammer. Like it was like I had to write it bold. It's the Paul, the word. Keep just keep bringing the simplistic. Keep bringing that true, pure word to the people. At this point, bring keep bringing the word. And at that point in time, there's something I'm gonna appear to you. And it, it, it'll happen when it's needed. Just keep bringing the word. Yes, Lord. That's what we do. And I thought it was interesting. I wrote this. This is my church I had in New Carlisle when I was like 25 years old my vision that I had for the church and you know and it's it's almost it's almost just like fitting that I, that God is speaking to me and saying Paul just keep bringing the word keep feeding my people keep feeding and bringing them the word you got the shield of faith ministry in town you have a small little group that you work with each week you bring the word to this channel just keep doing what you're doing. Because something's coming. <laughs> but keep bringing the word. So, now I'm going to share that to you guys. I know this is going to be a long one. But I don't care. And I don't think you do either. Those who truly love the Lord and the word, you're probably thinking, Paul, bring a 10-parter if you would. <laughs> so, now let's get into this. We started getting into it and I wanted to pray. So, we're, we're, I want to... Uh, painting my picture, I want you to understand it because the Egypt's going to come up later on here in this in this message. We're going to be hitting them. We're going to tie it in because that's how this whole sermon started was from the book of Ezekiel, probably almost a week ago. And the Holy Spirit began to deal with me about this message. And I began to see the United States that I'd never seen that light through the book of Ezekiel. And then I began to think about Egypt. Egypt represents sin. Okay, so. Remember that because the children of Israel, okay, remember they were called out of Egypt. God sent Moses to call, bring them out, and Egypt represents sin because Egypt was full of idolatry. The children of Egypt, Israel were under bondage to sin, okay? So God calls them out of sin. So Egypt, when you see Egypt, just remember it represents sin, okay? Keep that in your mind. Now, Acts chapter 7, verse 35. This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after he had, had, after he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt, in the Red Sea, and in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of you of your brethren, which is talking about Jesus Christ. Okay? Like unto me, him shall you hear. Amen. Him shall you hear. Remember Mount Transfiguration. Peter, I think James and John, 
And Peter's all excited. Let's build a, let's build a, t a tabernacle for all three, for you, Elijah, and, and uh, Moses. And all of a sudden, a cloud overshadows, and a voice speaks, says, Hear ye him. This is my beloved son. Hear, hear ye him. And all of a sudden, it's just Jesus appearing. I'm just quoting at the top of my head. You know what I'm talking about? Jesus, Only Jesus is standing there. And Jesus Christ, as we say all the time, is the Word. So we're only hearing Christ the Word. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, this is he that which is in, that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the, in the, Mount, in the Mount Sinai. And with our fathers, who received the lively oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back, turned back, turned back again to Egypt. They turned back to Egypt. Remember that. Now, saying unto Aaron, <laughs> Make us gods to go before us. For as, for as for this Moses, which brought us out, out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced unto the work of their own hands. Idolatry. They, they, they begin to murmur and they begin to complain. And they want to go, let's, we want to go back to Egypt. The very thing that God called them out of. You think about the United States of America, a country that was founded upon freedom of religion, right? Declaration of Independence. And even if you go back in time, you look at a guy like George Washington, who was a bona fide, full-fledged Freemason. But God still, even in the midst of that, because the Bible said there was a time where God winks. He winked over a lot of things because he saw he saw he, he was he was he was overlooking some of those things because he saw that there was at least there were there was a longing and a desire at that time to break free and to have a, to, to be able to have the freedom of choice to worship and serve God. So God blessed that spirit that motivation, and from that became the growth of the United States of America, and she was a very blessed country for many, many years, folks. Blessed by God. Truly, truly blessed mightily by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It, it, there was great revivals and great movements of God. And, 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 and many of these images of the beast churches have formed throughout this country. And, and from it, obviously, has come your life. You were born here. You're, if, if you were born in the United States of America, you're a part of this so-called free country, right? Freedom of religion. Folks, it ain't that way. And we're going to show you things here. Now, so, remember this. Egypt is used as a type of sin. And so the Word of God uses the word Egypt numerous times speaking prophetically. Okay? We see during the tribulation, God calls Jerusalem Egypt. Okay? Revelation 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies, excuse me, shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually, spiritually, is called Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was crucified, Jerusalem. So that very city is spiritually how God views it. I've, I've been asked this question, you know, by even by one of my brothers many times, is how is it Jerusalem at, at one point is leading the way with the vax, with the jab? You know, watch, I don't want to mess with my channel. Leading, leading the way, right? Why are they so hardcore pushing it? Probably more intense than our country. And I don't mean nothing. Not all that's Jerusalem is Jerusalem, amen? In the midst of, just like not all those who say they're Christians are Christians, Amen? As, we, as, we, as I've hit on so much of the church and the condition that we're at right here at the end times. So, Jerusalem, in God's eyes, is seen as Sodom and Egypt. A place of sin and idolatry. It has that, that, the, the mosque of Omar and all these things right there. The abomination of desolation. We're going to talk about that later on in this message a little bit. All these things going on and, and, and so forth. But when God's done with us which we are at that very final climatic moment, then he's going to turn back to the Jews. And then he's going to, then he's going to, he's going to 144,000, but they'll have to be martyred and killed. Amen? So, Egypt, a type of sin. God's calling, listen, if God can, I'll tell you something right now. If God can sit there and call Jerusalem, is, is, is call spiritually Sodom in Egypt? Oh, but, oh, Paul. But we're Americans. We're so different here. We're the United States of America. 
Oh, we're so we're so different. And you know what's going to happen too, Paul? Donald Trump's coming back. Yeah. As one lady thinks, there's going to be a revival. You know what? There might be a revival. But it ain't the revival you're thinking of, lady. Uh-uh. It's a, it'll be a false revival because all this is under complete judgment. That is thus saith the Lord. All of it is. Amen? Now, as we're going to show you more in the Word. Now, so we're, we're painting this picture here. Now, catch, catch, catch the mind of God. We're going to go into something here. Okay? God always makes it a public show. A public show. And as people have had trouble with this ministry, calling things out publicly through this channel, or as I did down at that tent meeting, calling out these, this community of faith, false, fake church, and all these churches, the Baptist church here in town. But folks, when I'm calling out my city, it's, it, it goes all over. It's in every city and state across this country and in other countries. They're all under judgment. That is, thus saith the Lord, the judgment hour is upon it. Amen. And God always makes it a public show. He always publicly calls things out under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he comes against it. Amen. He makes it a public show when he sends judgment. Amen. Now, so much that our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who bore my sins and your sins, died a sinner. Why? Because it, by imputation. And I'm going to read you the scripture. Allowed it to be a public display. A public display to this day. This symbolizes the public display of what our Lord Jesus Christ, who went to the cross publicly for you. God judging his, his son who took your sin and my sin. Amen. A public display. That's how God works. Amen. It's a public thing, folks. Now, amen. Amen. Second Corinthians, <coughs> crack my voice. Second Corinthians 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us. He hath made him. I know it's a picture. It's an image of, of, of just makes you think. But they we for he hath made him. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, who was sinless, who was perfect. He was more than just a man. He was a God-man. But oh, how many people have tried to mock and ridicule him. They did then, and they still do it right, they still do it right now today. Amen? That we might be made the righteousness of God. So here it is, imputation. God imputed sin, all of our sins to Jesus, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that then he would turn right, right back around and impute to you and me his righteousness but it was a public display and we're going to see right here in the scripture to the point where people looking afar off could see when that moment happened in history of time jesus was crucified right outside the, right outside the city of jerusalem out Gal, at galgotha hill where everyone could see it okay mark 15:33 and when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land. Oh, Lord, until the ninth hour. Darkness, folks. The bride of Christ. You know what I'm talking about. We're living in a complete darkness right now. It's through the whole land. And sometimes I understand you, you, you need something to entertain, to entertain your mind for a little while just to take a break from the reality of the darkness that's in the land. But protect yourself. Don't let any, any type of idol slip into your life, folks. I'm telling you, I warn you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let them creep in. You don't want to be found spiritually naked, spiritually blind as this church age is and when he comes because you begin to, to loosen up. You begin to get weary. You begin to be tired. I'm tired of waiting for this. This darkness is just getting to me. If, I, if it's darkness, I might as well just enjoy, enjoy it with everybody else. The devil deceives you. He's pulling you down right into, right into hell, folks. 
Don't, don't, don't you buy it. This is, this, is the, this is the hour of darkness of judgment. And folks, see, see the connection. Our Lord Jesus Christ was bearing the judgment of our sins, the sins of the whole world. So what takes place? Whole, total darkness, folks. As this world is under an open judgment before Christ. Before, it's an open book. It's going to be everything that's coming. It's going to be openly seen, folks. That's what God's doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, I had no idea thinking about it. This was just extra. Eli, Eli, Lama, Saba, I can't say it, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Oh, Lord Jesus. At that moment in time, folks, he died a sinner. It's hard to understand. God made flesh. But there was a moment where he had to, there was a moment from the Garden of Gethsemane when he was sweating, his sweat turned to blood. And he knew now the, his very moment of his life, the very thing, the, 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 the purpose that Scripture prophesied of what he was sent to do was now upon him. That, that moment of death, that moment of carrying the sins of the whole world was upon his life, amen? And he says in that moment, because the Spirit of God leaves him, and he takes Paul's sin. He takes your sin and the sins of the whole world. And he dies a sinner. And he's saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He dies a sinner. Amen. And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, behold, he calls Elijah, Elias. They thought he was calling Elijah the prophet. At that moment, nothing met, and he could do nothing. No, nothing could stop what was happening. He was destined to go to hell, as the Bible teaches. He takes the keys. He conquers it. He rose from the dead. Amen. A name above all names. Praise God. Now, the image of the beast, they live. They, they love it. They'll talk about the cross. I mean, they'll preach about Jesus died on the cross for your sins. But that's all they'll go with. They don't catch the mind of God that there's an open judgment right now that's going on and what we're heading into. Now, one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let alone, let us, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and then gave up the ghost. Amen. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw what he had cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man was a son of God. Now they'll talk about it. Now they'll proclaim it. When the rapture takes place, amen, you mark it down, folks. Then they'll talk about, oh, that man was a man. Oh, that Paul, he was, he was a man of God. Oh, there, that, there was a guy named William Brandon, but God says a prophet. But then it's too late. Amen? You, you, as you witness to people about you, the gospel and the revelations that God gave you, they'll say, you know what? Yeah, that sister, that lady was right. But it's too late. It's too late then. People recognize it. It's, it's just sad how it is. Once a person's gone, or that, that their final moment, then it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was. He was right. It's too late then, folks. It's too late. There was also, there was, now here's, what here's what I'm talking about. This is what I want to bring out. There was also women looking afar off. So he was cook outside of the city of Jerusalem, outside the gate, because we see the scripture will vindicate that. But also, he was on a hill. He was, God had it set up that way because he wanted everybody, they, they're going to see it. They're able to look from afar off and say, oh, wow, there he is. He's on that cross over there. The, 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 the whole city could look and see that the judgment of God was taking place on our Lord and Savior. Amen? All right, we're mad here. And with it, yes. Among whom the home was Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the less and of Joseph, and Salome, who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him, and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. They could see our Lord Jesus Christ from afar off. John nineteen seventeen, and he bearing his cross went forth to a place called the place of a skull. Place of a skull. Amen? Place of a skull. 
Hold on here. Lord, your time thing, you just... The word just keeps repeating itself. The place of a skull, judgment. I know you. I know some of y'all catch it. All right, I'm going uh, to hold on here. And maybe because I'm in the spirit right now, but I turned my phone on and, and it was totally off. And it looked like Jesus' face. <laughs> when I get in the spirit, boy, you start catching it, all kinds of stuff. But I want to pull this up real quick here. Let's see here. Let's look at, we'll go through Trisha's, Sister Trisha's text. She's the first, first one I ever saw this. She was the first one that God gave the revelation to. And she knows what I'm talking about when I... Let me just real quick here. Place. And there it is. When they okay, bearing his cross, he went forth to a place called the place of a skull. Remember this? Remember this? What happened after the prophecy, the leaf prophecy of the plague that's coming? The place of a skull. That just randomly, I don't know. I wasn't thinking about that till now. I'm turn this right back off. So I don't want to be distracted. Place of a skull. Amen. So. Catching the mind of God is the as the image loves to look back, always looking back, always looking back. Because remember, God, remember what God told Lot's wife, "Don't look back." She looked back at Sodom. She looked back at Sodom, which was sin. Amen. She kept looking back at her previous experience, and she turned into a pillar of salt. She was done, gone, finished. Amen. We're not looking back to what was. It's what God does right now. Amen. He's the I am. He's the ever-present tense God. Amen. Catch the mind of God right now. The place of a skull is upon us right now, folks. Amen. It's an open judgment hour, folks. It's where we're at. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Now, what's called in the Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him. And two other with him. On the either side, one, and Jesus is in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. But it's just right outside of the city on Golgotha's Hill where people could see it. The place of a skull. Amen. Folks, God gave me that message. It's it, that park is it's almost like it's a, away from the city, you know, where God had me bring that message. And he puts that thing in the sky, that cloud thing, and he allows others to see things that I don't see it. And as they see it, then I'm like, yes. God wraps his other people involved in it, folks. Amen. We are in, I'm, I'm going to continue. You know where we're at. You catch it. You catch the mind of God. Quit, quit, quit neglecting it. Quit calling it conspiracy theories, amen? This gospel is truth, amen? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, the place of a skull, and forever, amen? It's an open judgment hour, folks. Amen. How many warnings does God give? Warning, 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 warning. Judgment. That's how he works. Amen. Now, Hebrews 13, 12. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. Amen. Suffered without the gate outside the city. Amen. Oh, Lord. Flee them cities. I'm telling you. They're all under judgment. Amen. God gave Sister Trish a word of a judgment of a city. Folks, it's, 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 it's everywhere. Now, amen. Let us go forth, therefore, to him without the camp, without the camp, without the camp, bearing his reproach. Amen. Amen. So you're no longer a part of the city. Catch the, the mind of God. You're not an American, folks. You're not an American. You're not an American, folks. 
You're, you're, you're a Christian. You're called to carry the cross with Christ. Amen. To take up his sufferings. To carry his name. Amen. Which is his word. Amen. We're looking for a city whose builder maker is God. This is not our place. Amen. I don't care what country you're in. You're not Brazilian. You're not German. You're not this. You're not that. You're not French. Amen. You're a Christian. You're a child of God. You're not some. You're not evangelical or Catholic or some church name. You're a Christian. That's it. Filled with the Holy Ghost, a child of God, period, amen? Taking on, going outside of the city, amen? Going outside of it and going on that cross with him and bearing that with him, amen? And, and taking on his name and saying, I'm not a part of this anymore. I'm not a part of that church. I, I don't identify with this country, amen? Because it's all under judgment. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us go there forth unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. His reproach. For we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Oh, hallelujah. The new Jerusalem, whose builder and maker is God. He goes, said, I go to prepare a place for you. For where I am, there will you be also. Amen. Now, USA, United States of America, a city a country with cities. Amen? The Lamb. Let me teach you. Let me slow down a little bit here. Got a lot of things I want to share. The Lamb. The False Lamb. The Age of Deception. The Greatest Deceptive Age of All Living Time. The greatest battle ever being fought is in the mind of God's people as they go outside of the camp, as they flee the city, the, the sense of, of spiritually being connected to a to some church or some country or something of the of the carnal natural life. She's fleeing to Christ the Word. To get the victory of the battle that's going on in her mind. She don't put in her trust in, in no presidents, no politics. Those who are trying to pursue that are under a absolute deception. All of you are. Amen. Think this is some political agenda? It's not. It's all under judgment. That is not saying it's the Lord. It's coming down, folks. The hour is upon us. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Amen. You're deceived to think it is. Got a lady up there in Greenville. I'm putting together my little my little political rallies here and sending me messages in the past. I just kept ignoring it, lady. If you don't know if you listen to my ministry anymore, you're deceived, lady. You have been all along, and you you don't you don't you don't because you don't receive the Holy Ghost. You don't hear my, God's mind, Amen. You won't catch. You don't want to go die to yourself because that Jezebel spirit won't let you die to yourself, lady. Amen. That's it. I ain't addressing it again. Moving on. Now, 